Good evening. Welcome to Expat Insights. I'm your host Raju Mandhi and here at Expat Insights we take external views of internal successes of foreigners, expats and immigrants who have made Philippines their home. Tonight we are extremely honored and proud to have a representative of a country that is really huge, really far away and is be, uh, soon to become one of the superpowers of the world. Uh, the country Brazil and our guest tonight, the Ambassador of Brazil, His Excellency Alcides Pates, to tell us about what is happening in Brazil. Your Excellency, Your Excellency welcome to Expat Insights. Thank you very much. Sir, can you please start, and, uh, start by telling us about yourself, uh, a little introduction about your venture into the Philippines. I have been Ambassador to the Philippines for three years now. Yes, sir. <coughs> Uh, enjoying myself immensely. Yes, sir. I'm a career diplomat. I've yes, been ambassador before in Vietnam, immediately before coming here. Mm -hmm. I served in several uh, countries. Mm -hmm. I am from the south of Brazil, from Rio Grande do Sul. What's the name of that? Rio Grande do Sul. Rio Grande do Sul, yes. Mm -hmm. I would tell a lot more, but yes. basically that's it. Right, sir. Uh, what uh, do you like about this country? What do you like about Philippines? When you came into the Philippines, your first impression? It's very easy to like the Philippines. As yes, sir. You know, it's proverbial. Mm -hmm. I had been here before a long time ago. I mm -hmm. started my career in Hong Kong in, in the late 70s. Right, sir. So I had come here for a short uh, visit as a tourist. Mm -hmm. You were not a diplomat that I time. was. I okay. was. I was already. Mm -hmm. And I had a very good impression of the same, of the same things that people uh, mention about people smile, people right. are gentle, right. they communicate, they mm -hmm. speak English. Mm -hmm. uh, and Philippines has not, thank God, has not changed as far as that is concerned. Well, the nature hasn't changed, but the external circumstances have changed a bit. Oh, yes, a lot, yeah. yes. But uh, this is what is easy to like about the Philippines. Mm -hmm. People are open. Uh, I had, had, uh, have had a mission from Brazil for the this conference on franchising and they were repeating to me this week how impressed they are that people are so joyful. Yesterday? This week, yeah. The one that's running at SMX, there's a Brazilian... Yeah. Uh, it started, it, it yeah. lasted the whole week. I was there yesterday, so there's a Brazilian delegation there? Yeah. Yes. And there are Brazilian franchises coming into the Philippines? They are exploring this. They had several meetings with, uh, with potential Sammy partners, Sammy, yeah? with the PCCI also. Oh, fantastic. I didn't get to see any Brazilian uh, yeah, representation. There was, Maybe uh, I missed it. The head of the, the, our national association was here with uh, three other people. Oh, fantastic. Sir, so now uh, before we go into the business matters details, give us a little historical background of what Brazil is all about, the culture, the geography, a profile of Brazil, if you don't mind. <coughs> Brazil is the fifth largest country in the world. Uh, in, in terms of territory, mm -hmm. and it has the, largest, the fifth largest population in the world. Fifth largest population in the world, yes. so following China, India? Uh, United States and Indonesia. Okay, okay, lower than Indonesia. Yeah, a mm -hmm. little lower. But uh, that is already a lot mm -hmm. to say about Brazil. Uh, we <coughs> speak Portuguese. Yes, sir. Uh, Brazil. Our history is very is related to the Philippines history because we were both colonized Correct. Say, by yeah. Portuguese and Spanish. The yeah. world that was once divided between and, and there was the an exchange by the uh, Madrid uh, Treaty of Treaty of Madrid. Yeah. The Treaty of Madrid made uh, this. We, we were the southern part of Brazil was exchanged for the Philippines. The southern part of Brazil, so your hometown uh, was. Yeah, that's right. Because, because of the Tordesillas line, right, the sir. eastern part, which is a smaller part of yeah. what today is Brazil. Let me let me just show this uh, map of Brazil to my viewers because they might not know what we're talking about. So that is Brazil. If you take a closer look, uh, it's it's all of South America. There we go. There we go. Here we go. Yeah. And if you look at it, this is where the ambassador comes from, there, down there, the pink state. So all of South America is Brazil. It's huge. You can put in... Half of South America. You can put in about 20 Philippines inside there. 27. 27 Philippines. So 27 times 7,000 islands. That's how huge it is. So if you want to jog around Brazil, boy, you lose a lot of weight. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's... Uh, so we speak Portuguese. Yes, we sir. are 200 million people, almost 200 million, who speak the same language. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, Brazilians come from everywhere, from, from Europe, from Africa, from yeah. Japan. Yeah. 
uh, and they uh, it's a melting uh, melting pot in South America. But the language is the one binding element. Uh, and that's Portuguese. And that's Portuguese. So how's the racial outlook? I mean, what kind of uh, personalities and uh, facial features uh, uh, features do people have in Brazil? Any, they all look any, like any, you or? Any feature is a Brazilian feature. Because, because you, nobody would look at you in Brazil. Ah, so if a Filipino goes to Brazil, he will yeah. not stand out as no, an Asian. Nobody person. stands out in Brazil. Wow, I like that part. I like that part. Yes. And what's the main culture, uh, religion there? Faith? Well, it's a Catholic country tradition. Yeah. But it's open. There are many other religions. Uh, most uh, Christian religions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There are not many Buddhists, not many... Uh, ah, okay, okay. So a lot of European influence on Brazil. Yeah, a lot, a lot. Today, uh, Brazil is regarded, considered as one of the upcoming economies of the world. Uh, BRICS, as you mentioned earlier to me, and uh, could you give us a quick insight on what, uh, what has brought Brazil to this status in, in its uh, growth? Uh, Brazil has uh, immense resources of all kinds. Right, uh, so what you needed were good policies. And yeah. finally the good policies did start coming. Right. For, for, uh, the former president, Lula, who was there for Lula, eight years yeah. in two mandates, yeah. he, he kept some macroeconomic policies from his predecessor who had started working. We had uh, for some time very high inflation for a long yeah. time. Yeah. That was curbed. And he kept those policies mm -hmm. and uh, applied a lot of resources to social policies, like the, what you have here in the Philippines, the uh, four C's, the four P's, the Pantawid Familian Filipino Program. Say that again, I am not conversant with that. It's the CCT, uh, it's the it's Conditional Cash Transfer. Conditional Cash Transfer? That's okay. right. Mm -hmm. That was inspired in Brazil. The, uh, because of Philippines? The Philippine government yes, sir. Uh, inspired itself in the Brazilian program called Bolsa Familia, which was its transfer, transferring cash yeah. to the poor people on the condition that children are kept in school, that they are vaccinated, that yeah. the mothers go to hospitals, etc. This was a social initiative or a government? That was a government, po government policy from yeah. President Lula. Right, so and, uh, that, and that worked tremendously well. So it was equalizing of wealth. Brazil uh, traditionally is a very unequal country. It has been a very Rather unequal country socially. Many yeah. many rich people, some rich people, yeah, yeah. Uh, many poor people. Are the gap between class. the rich, yeah, yeah. What has happened in the, in the last few years is that uh, the middle class has expanded enormously. Right. right. So a lot of people have being brought from the poverty line, above the poverty line, millions of people. Right, sir. The programs have benefited about 50 million people. Right, right. That, uh, you can imagine, has an immense influence on the economy. Mm -hmm. Because you have more consumers, mm -hmm. uh, so the li life is easier, less violence. The, so resources and, po and good policies. Ah, they are being shared well. Yeah. All right, sir. Uh, we'll take a little break and then we'll come back and ask you about uh, other opportunities in business in terms of investment, in terms of trade for the Philippines. So we'll just take a break and come back. Uh, stay watching. This is Expat in Science and we are talking to His, ambassador, uh, His Excellency Ambassador Alcides Prates of Brazil and we are talking about why and how Brazil is booming nowadays. So stay, stay with us.
Welcome back to Expert Insights. I'm your host, Raju Mahantian. We are talking to the ambassador of Brazil, and he just ended by telling us about the PPP program of the Philippines, which I just figured out is called uh, Tontawid Familia Filipino Program, and that was inspired by Brazil. So thank you very much for that, sir, no, for that inspiration. Now, tell us a bit, give us a little bit uh, uh, the trade and investment opportunities in Brazil for people from Asia, people from Philippines, what are the opportunities? Uh, there are many opportunities. One uh, clear fact about what has been happening is that Brazil's uh, exports about uh, 10 years ago yes, sir. went, uh, for example, 25% mm -hmm. to the United States. And, and what were these products? And many. And, and then in, into Asia, less than 10%. Right. Now, last year, yeah. Uh, Brazil's exports to Asia right. were 30%. And to the from United the, States... From the gross exports, 30% oh, to Asia. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of it goes to China. But mm -hmm. a lot of it has started coming to Philippines, Singapore, uh, Indonesia, Other Asian countries, yeah. Yeah, ASEAN countries. And of course India and others. So it has increased tremendously. So you see that the evolution is... Mm. that the, uh, Asia has become relatively much more important than it was a few years ago, and it still is. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a lot of the exports are commodities, and that is a problem for Brazil. Brazil has been tremendously successful in exporting commodities. Iron ore, soy, mm -hmm. uh, meat. Mm -hmm. uh, meat is also already an industrialized product, but most of it is commodities. Mm -hmm. But the potential is there for increasing. The yeah. Philippines exports to Brazil electronic products. Okay. Uh, basically, that is, is it. But it's uh, diversifying also. There have been many missions yeah. from the Philippines to Brazil, from Brazil yeah. here. When, when you said that uh, this is becoming a problem for Brazil, what, what did you no, mean it, by it, it, Why it, would it, exports become a problem? It, it, it's similar to what uh, the economists call the Dutch disease. That I you concentrate too much on the success of one commodity, in the case oil. Right. And you don't develop other possibilities for the future. When the oil goes down, then you... Oh, you know. okay, okay. So the focus during the commodities was on few but products. We, we are very, our president has been very alert to this. So every, all measures have been in the government. Mm -hmm. All measures have been taken for when we... Uh, stop or, or get less money from commodities, uh, the other sectors of the economy uh, will be good. Brazil is already an industrialized country. Brazil produces more than 300 million, 3 million cars per year. These are uh, local brands? No, or these they are, are partnerships with? They are, they are brands from Europe, Japan. from Japan, from mm -hmm. the United States. Yeah. But they are produced there. The jobs are there mm -hmm. and the money is there. We export a lot of cars also. Right. So w what uh, has made these global car manufacturing companies set up shop in Brazil uh, compared to other countries which are much more, uh, probably more lucrative from the perspective of an Asian, uh, countries like China or Philippines. What drives these global uh, companies to Brazil? Is it Investment in Brazil has been benefited a lot by change of legislation. We used to be a very closed country, mm -hmm. but it opened up, and that has stimulated a lot of investment from abroad. Yeah. Good labor force, relatively cheap, uh, now fortunately going up. The Com price compared to the Philippines? Uh, well, the Philippines is the cheaper, is cheaper yeah. Right. Yeah. But, yeah, especially now, because yeah. the salaries have been going up a right. lot in Brazil. Yeah. But you have good, uh, good quality of uh, labor. Yeah. Uh, in other conditions, infrastructure, uh, power, power. Yeah. Yeah. Although power, like in the Philippines, is always a problem. It's very right, expensive. Right, right. Bureaucracy is a challenge in Brazil. Bureaucracy or? used to be much more of a challenge than it is now. That has improved a lot. Mm. And, and this happened in the last 10 or 15 yeah, 10, years? 10, 15 years. But the Japanese car makers and the American car makers, did they move to Brazil 30 years ago or just in the last the first decade? The first important car maker was yeah. Volkswagen of Germany. That right. was in the 60s. Yes, sir. And then little by little the others moved in, as the country improved. We had a military dictatorship in Brazil for a long time. That, that was, in a way, 
uh, the, the economic conditions were okay, mm -hmm. but the social and political st situation was very bad. That, very that stagnating. Did, uh, yeah. did, did, did that a lot of damage to Brazil. Mm -hmm. Since the democratization, conditions have improved tremendously. And that's one factor. Dem uh, stable institutions, mm -hmm. a stable democracy, no war with the neighbors. So yeah, you're okay. So that there are many factors, but some of crime, other uh, business risk factors in terms of stability of banks and the financial sector. The financial sector is very stable. It's one of yeah. the most stable in the world. Uh, the fact that uh, the budget has been kept uh, well, we have had surpluses, mm -hmm. uh, stable financial conditions. Mm -hmm. Th there has been a uh, crime rate in Brazil that uh, was very high. Mm -hmm. Especially in some places, but not necessarily in the places where the investments are put up. Yeah. It has improved tremendously as a result of the policies I mentioned to you about. Right, the, the fact that many, many poor families came mm -hmm. out of poverty. That mm -hmm. has a very positive impact on crime rate. Today, Asia, uh, because of the ASEAN, is consolidating and ga uh, gathering strength together and becoming a group that can a force that can be reckoned with. I understand similar things have happened in the past in South America or they're still happening. What is your uh, perspective on that? Yeah, we have a, pro a quick process of integration, regional integration in Brazil. Yeah. Uh, the Mercosul, which is Mercosur. made up of Brazil, Argentina, Uruguay and Paraguay. Yes, and sir. we have associate states like Chile, Venezuela. And there is a South American integration process also, and a Latin American integration process. Mm -hmm. This has been working well. Mm -hmm. Tariffs have gone to zero, particularly right. all across the board. Mercosur uh, is not only a free trade agreement. It's yeah. more of a customs union. So you get the, the economies really integrated. It's not perfect, yeah. but it has done a lot to integrate the region to improve conditions, to we haven't had uh, any problems with the neighbors, but the fact that the integration makes it impossible. Thus, does goods, uh, services, and people are able to move across That's borders right. with certain restrictions very or few restrictions. very few. So, if if if, I'm, if I hold an Argentine passport, I can go to Brazil. You, need, you don't need even a passport. With your identity card, you can go to Brazil. How about the other states? They can go set up business, get a job. Yeah, it's, in, it's, it's improving. So it's like more of United States of South America rather than... It's a customs union, yeah, in yeah. the sense that uh, there's a lot of liberty to, to invest and to move labor, even labor. labor. Mm -hmm. What is it doing? What, uh, what are these South American uh, nations together doing to uh, bridge trade gaps and economic, ga economic gaps with Asia. I was at the Argentinian Business Council and they were talking about trade missions, etc. But it seemed like uh, there was a lot of gap, it seemed like there was a lot of knowledge and cultural gap. So what is Mercosul doing, big picture, to uh, increase trade with Your Asia? Your Secretary of Foreign Affairs was uh, last month in Buenos Aires for the meeting of FIALAC. FIALAC is the Forum of Latin American East Asian Cooperation. Yes, sir. Uh, this, and very recently, in, sep in the month of September, President Aquino signed a restructuring of the internal coordination for FIALAC, for ASEAN, for APEC. That means that things are moving very fast, in mm -hmm. the sense that the two sides are talking Ma to each other, visiting each other. Yeah. Many uh, delegations are coming and going. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you're right, knowledge is uh, key. Awareness and knowledge. Awareness of what the possibilities are. Mm -hmm. There is, of course, the distance. We are uh, in the yeah, antipodes. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that is not a real problem that's anymore. A, that's a minor logistical yeah. challenge. Yeah. Only, yeah. So that has improved a lot also. But yeah. no, n right now, is more knowledge, awareness of what the possibilities so are. So people who see far into the future in terms of their global expansion, in terms of their business expansion, what uh, steps would you, Ambassador, recommend to businesses in the Philippines saying that, hey, if you want to expand your markets, there are these opportunities, though the distance is large, what would you recommend to companies like the large Filipino companies, San Miguel, Dole, 
Del Monte. Uh, one, uh, there, there is a huge uh, Filipino investment in Brazil in container services in Recife. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Henrique Razon and his firm, uh, yeah. International Terminal Container Services. ICT. Service, yes, ITC. Yeah. That, that's a huge investment. It has been there for 10 years and it's right. in, in, in increasing, it's expanding a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, vale is the Brazilian mining company, is Which established is here. Yeah. And uh, they are prospecting already. Yeah. There are a lot of uh, contacts between. Uh, Brazil. We, we, we produce, we make good planes, airplanes. Brazil does? Yes. Uh, Embraer, Embraer is the, the third or the fourth largest. Mm. Uh, plane maker in the world. Mm -hmm. So there are some uh, possibilities there too. Yeah. In, in many areas. The, the in the franchising that I mentioned before. Which is the small businesses and those yeah. uh, mom and pop shops. But uh, the thrust of the thrust towards growth for Philippines is agriculture and of course international trade. No? So what products or services of Philippines are a viable uh, thing for Brazil or other Mercosur partners? As far as agriculture is concerned, our cooperation is more in the sense of uh, teaching each other how to do better things mm. than to than trade because uh, you are an agricultural product, you right, produce sir. a lot, right, we sir. produce the same things, rice. Mm. Okay. We export, Brazil exports a lot of meat to the Philippines, industrialized meat. Yeah. But what is important is that many missions are, are coming and going Mm -hmm. exchanging information, mm -hmm. establishing contacts. Mm -hmm. There is a, already a web of uh, relations. Yeah, how how about happen. setting up businesses there, a brand new business? If uh, Filipinos want to set up business and go and work in Brazil, what are the opportunities? It's, it's very, Brazil is a very open, very really? so welcoming. It's easy as one, two, three to set up a business. We, we, we receive a, about $40 billion of investments every year. Wow. And Brazil right now, uh, invests even more than that in other countries. Wow, that's why it's BRICS. Yeah. That's why it's one of the emerging countries. So it, it, the coming and going, that's what is healthy as mm -hmm. far as business is concerned. In, 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 the, in the sector of IT, information technology and business processing outsourcing, Brazil seems to be one of the upcoming players after India and sure. Philippines, no? Sure. So uh, what are the leading factors for them to be one of the bigger players in uh, IT and BPO? What well, uh, as you said, it's coming. It's not so it's much. It's not reached yeah. there, yeah. The Philippines has made huge uh, steps forward because of the fact that so many people speak good English here. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not the case in Brazil. We mm -hmm. have to train people for that. Uh, and because the business in Brazil is so diversified that you need information techno technology. We're concentrating on that. It's mm -hmm. part of what I told you before, the policy of avoiding the Dutch disease. The and Dutch disease is focusing too long on... Brazil has been uh, hiring uh, brains. Yeah. We used to be a, there <laughs> used to be a brain drain. In Brazil. Brazilian brains would be... Now you're draining brain. it Now we're it draining it back. Yeah. Uh, openly, of course, in the sense that we offer well, opportunities that's, for people. That's the name of the game. That is, uh, has been improving a lot. Bra the Brazilian economy is larger than all the ASEAN economies put together. Wow. Brazil wow. So the 10 ASEAN partners plus? No, the only the 10 the ASEAN, ASEAN, ASEAN partners. Which is less than the 2 trillion uh, for 300 billion that is Brazil's economy. Brazilian economy is the eighth in the world now. It's a great place to go. It is. It's really a great place to go. People think of America, U.S. Uh, That's Europe. why they are, the they are called the emerging economies. Fantastic. Uh, the crises have been, uh, have not affected that much Brazil. The, the last year's the financial America, crisis. The 2008 crisis. Yeah. We, we were able to. How about currently? What is the current stock, ma stock market situation in Brazil? It has been suffering like all other stock it's markets in the world. Plunge, yeah, yeah. Because it's all linked. Yeah. Sir, uh, last week, uh, the president of Brazil and the president of Philippines were in Washington with President Obama. Could you give us an insight on what occurred there and what, what, do the, what are the prospects of those discussions that happened last week? It's a brand new initiative. By it's President Dilma Rousseff. Rousseff. Yeah. It's part of what I told you before, good policies. As mm -hmm. the pr your president, President Aquino, has been saying, yeah. you need transparency in government. The name of this initiative is Open Government Partnership. Mm -hmm. President Rousseff 
and President Obama, the co-chairs, and President Akin with uh, five others uh, make up the steering committee. But many countries are interested, almost, uh, about 50 countries are interested in participating in that. The idea is anti-corruption, anti-bureaucracy, yeah. to open to transparency in government, to make things easier, to make business so easier. Therefore, creating their structures and systems within the government at par with each other, yeah. thus matching the trade agreements that are happening. It's promoting what is good policy and avoiding yeah. The, the, yeah. the problems like corruption. Mm -hmm. Tell us a bit about your president, the lady president. She seems to have a good reputation and she needs to be an action-oriented person. Uh, a little yeah, background. yeah, she is. Uh, she she had never run for office before. Right, right, uh, right. It was her first uh, political campaign. She's yeah. a very, she has a strong personality. She's very knowledgeable in managing mm -hmm. uh, government. And she's quite she young. She's uh, long. She's in her early sixties. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she has been for a long time with government, mm -hmm. and she uh, has been a political activist since very young. Mm -hmm. During the military dictatorship I mentioned to you, she was mm -hmm. in prison for some time. Uh, she is very open. Mm -hmm. uh, she has this uh, heritage of President Lula. She's from the same political party. Oh, she's party. from the same clan, same, yeah. same, same political party. Mm -hmm. she's, it's a different government. She has different priorities than President Lula did. Mm -hmm. But she's doing very well. She's very well respected, she's mm -hmm. very strong. She has been facing the problems, some political problems. You can imagine in a democracy. Yeah. Uh, you have, we have 130 million voters in Brazil. Wow, wow. That's a lot. How, how is the demographic set up? What is the age? How does the age... Brazil uh, is a young country. Like it's a young country like yeah. Philippines and yeah. India. Yeah. Sir. Uh, we'd like to now take this discussion to Brazil in the Philippines. You know what is happening with Brazil in the Philippines, the Brazilian presence in the Philippines. So we'll be coming to a break, but maybe you can just introduce, uh, give us a picture of the size and the presence of Brazil in the Philippines, besides Wale. So would you like to tell us what we're doing? People or business? Uh, I don't know if they're any <laughs> different from each other, but maybe business first, okay. Well, we, there aren't many companies. Vale is the only company that I know of. That yeah. is, but there are some. Uh, for Havaianas, for example, is a brand that you uh, very We stole uh, from Brazil. Oh, we no, bought. No, we no, bought. No, I'm just you, kidding. You, yeah. No, no. They have very good relations. Uh, that, that's a question I want to ask you. Why is the Havaiana so expensive? What's with it? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll talk to the, to the people. That to the people that they'll, they'll, they'll give you a discount, maybe. <laughs> okay. So let's take the break, then we'll come back and talk to you about some lighter stuff about Brazilian culture and Brazilian beauty, sir. So stay, uh, we'll come back to you. Stay with us. We're talking to the ambassador of Brazil, and we are talking about booming Brazil. I'm your, I'm your host, Raju Mandi, and we'll just come back. Welcome back to Expert Insights. We are talking to the ambassador of Brazil and he just finished giving us a big picture on the country Brazil, the government of Brazil and the business opportunities that Philippines, Filipinos have in Brazil. Uh, let's take this conversation to a lighter note and talk to him about uh, the fun and the happiness that Brazil promotes with its carnival and its capoeira. Sir. So can you tell us a bit about the carnival? How big is it? And well, yeah, Carnival is a traditional celebration, not only in Brazil. In, yeah. in Brazil, it became famous especially because of Carnival in Rio. Yeah, a yeah. Big show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and people from all over the world go there. But Carnival is also uh, celebrated in different ways in Brazil. It's more popular people's uh, participation. Right, sir. Uh, they, it's a different character in different parts of Brazil. But there's the Carnival in Venice, Carnival in New Orleans. We copy it here in Bacolo, then in uh, uh, south of the Philippines. Yeah, it's, it's called Mascara. Yeah, it's an old, it's an old, it's, we, we didn't invent it, we, yeah. we, we imported it too. And, and the exciting and the thrilling uh, dance movements of capoeira, sir, where, uh, what's the root and what is the essence of capoeira? Yeah, Brazil, the Brazilian population is made up uh, uh, today by a lot of African descendants. Right, right. Um, unfortunately, this is a sad part of our history, they were taken there as slaves. Oh, okay, for the sugar okay. cane right, production right. and other production. Similar to, to United States. What happened States, in the United yes, States, sir. in other countries, many mm -hmm. other countries. The slaves were not supposed to, to, to do martial arts because they could be dangerous. A martial art expert is a dangerous slave. There was martial art in the uh, so two or three bec centuries because, ago? Because they could not do martial arts, they invented capoeira. Oh, oh, oh. They okay. disguised it as a dance. Right. So, uh -huh. People were dancing and playing music, so it shouldn't be martial arts. The, the owners or the slaves were not worried because they thought this, this is innocent. It's just yeah, music They seem and to dance. be dancing like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. right. or that, so that's how the, this martial arts would... But it never lost the character of dance yeah, and yeah, music. Yeah. It's still there. But it's, that's, it's that's the origin of capoeira. It's so hugely popular. It's so beautiful today. And it, it kind of gives expression to a, a person's angst. How about its presence in the Philippines? The Brazilian presence, you said there's Wale, that's one mining company. Yeah. How about the social and... Uh, but capoeira is one. There is a very good school of capoeira here, headed by a Brazilian. There are some branches in Bacolod and some branches also here in Manila. Mm -hmm. Capoeira is very present here. Music, Brazilian music is so widespread in the Philippines. Well, I love well, it. A Filipino yeah. friend of mine told me that the Filipinos don't know that Bossa Nova is not Filipino, for example. <laughs> because, because you play so much, you right, enjoy right, so right. much. Yeah. We, we are very similar people as far as that is concerned, mm -hmm. Brazilians and Filipinos. We like music, we mm -hmm. like... You dance more than we do, but we, we play a lot of music. It's a different thing. And it's very easy to communicate. There's a lot also, there's a lot of presence of Brazilian models here in the Philippines. Yeah. And, uh, of course, this is because they look good. But yeah, uh, and I believe that the fact that they're, they're <laughs> so successful, they're successful everywhere. Yes, sir. But some of the best models here are of mixed Japanese origin. Oh, okay. So they have an Asian look that attracts the... Right, 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 right. They are very successful. Very good people, by the way. You, you law know abiding, them. Law abiding people. Sir, right. now uh, you've lived in this country for three years and as you mentioned, you like, uh, like the country very much. Now, if you were to take something uh, from the Philippines, a culture, a landscape, or a habit, or anything from the Philippines, what is it that you would take from the Philippines and go and incorporate it in the culture of Philipp uh, Brazil? What is that thing that you would like to do? Well, that's a hard, hard, hard question. question because uh, what you like about the Philippines, there are so many landscapes. I wouldn't take any volcano back to Brazil. Boracay, you would take it. No, the volcano. We have a lot of beaches in Brazil. Right, yeah. Uh, the landscape here is fantastic and, yeah. and in many ways it's different from the Brazilian landscape. Volcanoes, for example, is one yeah. example. Yeah. Uh, that's what impresses the tourists, so you don't want them to take elsewhere, you <laughs> yeah, want them yeah, to yeah. come here and see right, it, yeah. uh, but, but as, as far as culture is concerned, yes, this uh, joy of living is part of the culture that we have it too. Yeah, so we, we the just spirit of Bayani Han in the Philippines, that yeah, community. Yeah, that's right, that's too, being Asian, mm -hmm. the Filipinos have even that, even stronger. In Brazil, the nuclear family is more important than the larger family. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, especially because Brazilian population is urban. 85% of the population oh, is such urban. such a huge land and people stay in the cities, right. isn't that yeah. sad? Because a large portion of it is the jungle, right? The Amazon jungle. The Amazon is uh, 200 million square kilometers, a lot. But no, there are many people in, the, in, the ag in agribusiness, but agribusiness is very mechanized. Mm -hmm. So you don't need many people to, to run very good, successful mm -hmm. agribusiness. What is your most favorite place in the Philippines, uh, cultural uh, tourist spot? That's hard to, that's to, also to say, hard to because I have been to, 
to Palawan, to Batanes, to, to my own volcano. I have been to more than 55 provinces in Italy. Wow, in three years you've been and busy. It's, yes, and it's always surprising and interesting. The recent one, the most recent one which you liked? I went very recently to Leyte in, in summer. Mm -hmm. I went to a place, a fantastic place called Biri Island. Biri? Yeah. B-I-R-I. Biri? Biri, Biri Island in, in northern Leyte. summer. Wow. I've never heard summer. of it. I've been in this country 30 years. Uh, you should. I should you take should. a bicycle and go. <laughs> but as a matter of fact, you have to take a motorcycle. To okay, get there. okay, good. I'm lucky there. <laughs> because you have to take a boat and then a motorcycle to get there. Uh, it's, it's still isolated. That's why there aren't many tourists there. But sir, you will hear a lot about Biri soon. Sir, uh, your stay in Philippines has been good so far. I'm sure you'll stay for many more years, no? But post your term in this country, what would you like to be remembered as having done for the Philippines and the Brazilian community here? What is that one thing you'd like to do? The relations have, not because of my own activity, but I, I have tried to help. Relations are excellent between Brazil, Brazil and Philippines. And Philippines yeah. they, they were, we, we were here in the day one of the independence of the Philippines in 46. Yes, you know, there was a Brazilian diplomat here. But because of the distance, because of technology, we were not so close. Mm -hmm. In more recent years, we're much closer. We are getting, so we know each other better. We have traveled. Uh, your president went to Brazil. Uh, last month, your Minister of Foreign Affairs was there, the Secretary, yeah. Albert de Rosario. We, we're coming and going a lot. And we, we, are, we are knowing each other better. And so that's what you mentioned. That was a, you were right in saying that that's the key to the future. The culture. To know culture. each other better. So that's what you'd like to add to. A little more I culture. I have tried to contribute to that. So thank you very much for being on Expat Insights. And I am... Uh, Glad for all the insights on Brazil. If there's anything you'd like to say to your community here in the Philippines, the camera is yours for the next one minute, and I really thank you for your insights. So one minute for yourself, sir. The we have uh, close contact with the com Brazilian community in the Philippines. Yeah. They know that uh, yeah. we help them. They help us. Yeah. To the Filipinos, what I have to say is just keep keep on do going. Because you can use some Tagalog if you want. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mabuhay po kayo mabuhay. Mabuhay is okay. <laughs> How do you say Mabuhay or something in Brazil? Is there something? Viva. Viva, viva Brazil, yeah, viva, viva Philippines. Yeah, yes, so, yes, thank you very much. Thank sir. you. Thank you very much. So, that was uh, the Ambassador of Brazil, Alcides, Alcides Prates, and that was his views on Brazil and insights on the Philippines. Uh, I'm your host, Raju Mandian. I'd just like to promote an uh, event, a training and a conference that's coming up. On September 29th, Professor Ram Charan of Kellogg's is going to do a one-day workshop and I invite uh, all my viewers to come and visit that workshop. Post that uh, event, we have a guest, Mr. Francis Estrada of AIM and La Salle. He'll be our uh, guest for next week. So stay watching Expat Insights and I hope you enjoyed this evening. Have a great week and do catch us on Facebook or on LinkedIn. Our website is www.expatinsights.com. Good night and mabuhay. So thank you so much. Thank Gracias. you so much. Gracias. Thank you.